Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to try something new today. So you're on my GoPro, you're watching this through my GoPro camera, and it is actually connected to like a chest mount. I'm going to put that on and we are going to spend some time in the garage. I won't edit this video or anything like that. It's just going to go straight to YouTube. It'll be very long, probably boring, but if you just want to, you know, relax and watch me work in my garage, then, then you're in the right place. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, camera on my chest and uh, hopefully this will be interesting to at least one person. I haven't put this uh, chest mount on in quite a while, but what you can see now, I hope anyway, is the, hold on, let me snap this. There we go. I'm thinking and I'm hoping you can see the bike that we're going to be working on today. This is quite a beauty. I found this off the trash pile a couple weeks ago. I shouldn't have picked it up. It was a mistake. I know, I admit. But um, yeah, I just thought, I don't know what I was thinking. I saw the bike and I felt bad for it, I guess. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'm going to bring it home and try to sell it and make a few dollars. I don't know. I just hate seeing things get thrown away. In hindsight, if I could go back, I would just leave it though, because this thing is super rough and it's junk. I mean, look at the rust. Rusty cranks, rusty brake calipers. Not that that's going to really hurt anything, but it just looks ugly and it's going to make it, you know, hard to sell. Even comes with some leaves. Obviously, it's been sitting outside. And it wasn't a, uh, here's some more leaves. It wasn't a great bike to begin with. I did a quick look up of what this bike was. By the way, it's a Next brand. Next. Avalon True Comfort. It is a Walmart bike. Um, it was around $160 new. I don't think they make this exact model anymore. But yeah, $160 new probably didn't get rode that much. I mean, look at the tires. They're pretty, pretty unused. So, you know, it's the same old story with, with these bikes. Somebody buys them. They don't ride right, they get bored of it, and they just go to the trash basically after a number of years, usually, of sitting outside or inside. In this case, it looks like outside. Now the frame is aluminum. What a waste of 6061 aluminum, unfortunately. It is a full suspension, so we have a little shock back here. Of course, the front fork shock up front. Um, currently, the bike doesn't ride at all. The chain, it's a one by by the way, but the chain is not on the chain ring, so it's not able to pedal. Also, the shifter cable is here. It's not where it should be. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the wheels are not at all true. So this thing is in horrible condition. And my goal here though is to get it into the uh, riding condition and then I'll sell it. I don't know what I can get for it. Maybe. 30 to $50, I'm thinking, if, if I can get it riding good. So that's kind of the goal. Definitely not worth the time, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it anyway since I already picked it up. So uh, first thing I want to do while, to get started, I want to try to air up the tires just to see if they hold air while, while I do other things. So this is a very raw and uncut type of video, so you're going to see me looking for my tire pump. Let's go over on this side. Here it is. I actually kind of, I bought this uh, probably near 10 years ago when I first got into biking over in Switzerland. And I think it's starting to get kind of funky because sometimes I have trouble getting the valve engaged properly, but usually it does eventually work. I remember buying this pump, by the way. I bought it in the co-op. Uh, what's it called? The Birch Center, Birchy Center in Zuckville. Uh, and I think I paid way too much. I, I remember I paid like 40 or 50 bucks for it, which I think is a bit much for just a kind of a very average pump. Maybe I paid even more, I don't remember. Ugh, doesn't want to turn. Hope you can see what's going on well. That's the whole idea that you can see what I'm doing. Why is that so tight? Okay. 
Oh, and by the way, uh, my daughter made this uh, wristband. That's that's what that's about. I, I wouldn't normally go out and get one of these myself. She made it for Father's Day. I need the other day. All right, so let's see if we can. Okay. on a little bit better. I do hear something leaking. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. Okay, the tire is a little bit hard, but there's some noise. Let's take this off. Oh good, I think that was my valve interface that was causing that uh, sound. Let me try to add some more air in that case. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to around 30 PSI. Yes, if you're wondering, I do use Imperial and Metric. I use PSI. I never really cared for the bar system. I don't know why. No reason. But I do use... Uh, metric when it comes to temperature. I prefer it anyway. So we're at 28.7 degrees in the garage tonight, which is pretty hot. It's not super hot, but it's, it's warm in here. All right, so we got air in the back tire. Nice. Okay, still doesn't turn because it's out of true. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can air up the front tire. My history with metric and imperial units is kind of long because I didn't actually start off getting into metric uh, when I went to Europe. As many of you know, probably I, I lived over there for nine years, so I definitely got familiar with metric, but it was actually before that that I started getting familiar with it because I worked in a gun factory actually for six years. And the factory was owned by a Swedish man. And so all of our dimensions for all the parts in the factory were all metric, except for maybe like the stock, like, you know, half inch stock and one inch stock or three quarter inch plate, things like that were, were oftentimes imperial units, but all the dimensions on the drawings were all metric. So that's what started me with metric. Okay, this one's taking air pretty well. I'm, I'm really glad about that. What I was not hoping for was that there's like, they would have just, the tire would just immediately, you know, lose the air or there's a huge rip in the inner tube. So, whew, a little bit out of breath. So that's actually a good start. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I don't know, let's just see if we can get this chain on the, on the uh, cassette. I'll tilt you up. I'm gonna, because we have a chain guard, I'm going to try to get it on by rotating it backwards. There we go. Okay. All right, it's on. Oof. But I can't pedal it. I can't turn the cranks too good because the brakes are rubbing. I think they're rubbing because this... But it would work otherwise uh, because this wheel is probably very untrue. But at least it, you know, things are moving. Not too, not too, too bad. I'm gonna have to get a whole new shifter cable in here. I mean, maybe, I, yeah, I, will, I do have to actually, because the, the, this should have a, like a, I don't know what it is. I was gonna say lead, maybe it's aluminum, but there's a, a ball that's supposed to be on the end here, or a cap. So this has to be replaced. Um, I guess I'll also kind of explain what I'm doing it at, what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, right here, we need to take this bolt off so we can remove the rest of this uh, shifter cable. That's quite small. Usually on higher quality bikes, you'll have an Allen bolt 
or a hex bolt, but in this case, it's a normal uh, six-sided bolt. I don't know what size. Let's head over to my drawer. Oops, wrong one. Uh, wrenches. So my wrenches are kind of a mess, as you can see, but there is a little bit of uh, order here. So the right side is mostly, or it is all fractional imperial, going back to that again, 11 sixteenths. The left side, just separated by cardboard here, is uh, metric. And then these are my nice craftsman metric set that I can just get exactly the right thing. So these are kind of just miscellaneous. So I'm going to start off with this, is this eight? Can't quite read it. Not, no, it's a nine. Probably not a nine. Let's just go with the 10. Good old 10 millimeter craftsman forged in the USA. Let's see if that's the right size. And it is not, okay? Might be nine or eight then. The good thing is at least bikes are mostly metric. Uh, all the bolts and stuff. There we go, it is nine. All right, uh, uh, my challenge is too, I'm really hoping that I'm aiming the camera correctly and that you can actually see what's going on. It'll be a real tragedy if I go to look at this video and, and you can't see anything the whole time. <laughs> All right, that was easy to uh, get that out. So now we're just getting the cable out of here. Got the cable out. Here's the old cable. And I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna try to weave this up so I can throw it away somewhat neatly and then we're going to head over to my cable box try to find a cable i think i have some shifter cables on hand i hope i think slash i hope i'm not going to mess with the housing unless i absolutely have to i mean i'm not going to do anything unless i absolutely have to because i don't want to waste any money on this bike it's not worth it I even considered just making it a single speed, just getting it into a gear that works. And then just saying, forget it about the gears. I can sell it like that and I can say it's just a single speed. It's been converted to single speed, <laughs> which essentially means it has no shifter, no shifter cable, and you can adjust the stop to whatever gear you want it to be in permanently. You know what? Why don't I do that? Why should I even waste shifter cable on this thing? Whoever's riding this bike probably doesn't care. <laughs> about shifting too much that'll make it easier on me and cheaper let's do that okay so uh just to tell you how that works I'll tell you like i've done it so many times i really haven't but i think i know how how to do this um usually a derailleur will have a stop system which is designed so that the chain doesn't go too far and go off of the cassette um either on the high side or the low side and what you can do is you can adjust that and i think it's this screw here and this screw here, they call it the high and low limits. I think that's them. This one looks a little different than, yeah, that's it. I can see the H here, that's the high. And then it's down here, must be the low. And so that, uh, we can use that to say, well, the limit's not here off of it. We're gonna set the limit maybe on this one. That'll probably be good. So it looks like it's a, unfortunately it's not a Allen key. Again, it is a, like a Phillips head screwdriver. So yeah, that, kind of fits let's go ahead and give it a try if i turn this i should start to see the derailleur eventually i hope you can see that okay eventually it should am i doing the right sometimes if you're not sure which one's the right one you can actually kind of ah i was doing the wrong one this one's gonna be this one's gonna Okay, so like if you manipulate the derailleur, you can kind of look closely at how it's working and you can kind of see like what's going to what's gonna do what. So this high one, it means high gear, not high up here. So it's saying this is the high side, that's the low side. I had it mixed up at first. So I'm going to start tightening this high side one. Yeah, and I can see the derailleur is now being pushed over. So what I can do is I can start pedaling. Oh, I can't pedal because of this darn... Okay. I can't pedal because the wheel's so out of true that uh, I can't, I, it won't, the wheel won't turn. So what we're going to do is disengage the rear V-brake. You can just squeeze these usually and then pull this little noodle away. And it's hard, I know it's hard to see, but um, this will come out of here usually. So give it a good tug and there. And that's how you kind of can open up the brake caliper. And now it's going to let me turn the wheel freely. Yeah, it's pretty 
pretty wobbly as you can see. I'm gonna try to improve that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this into a gear that we like. So this is gonna, turning the screwdriver is almost like my gear shifter right now. I'm gonna get it into maybe this gear, see it just shifted actually quite nicely. And I think we're gonna go in this. You know, this one's actually probably good. I'm probably just gonna leave it right here. That sounds pretty nice. I can adjust it a little bit, fine tune it. There we go, cool. Now let's see, let's see what's going on in the front. One weird thing, and you see this all the time with like these cheap bikes, you know, it was assembled wrong, I think. Maybe, or maybe, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe it was. No, maybe it wasn't, I don't know what's going on. There we go. <laughs> wasn't assembled wrong. I saw this was twisted around, but it was actually just the handlebars that were twisted around. So it's probably assembled right, and at some point the handlebars got all wonky. Whatever. But you know what else we're gonna do is go ahead and get rid of this cable housing because oy, we don't need it no more. We're not gonna have shifting on this bike. So there goes the housing. <sighs> One less thing to worry about here. All right. Um the shifter I'll just leave up here. It does, it's not gonna be able to do anything. Whatever, that'll just stay like that. Okay. Uh, front wheel also out of true, as you can see. Not as bad though, I think, but it is also out of true. Um, let's disengage the brakes the same way we did the back and we can see how just how bad it is. There we go. That's actually not that bad. I may not even have to do anything with the front. Uh, the back though, unfortunately, I'm going to have to. Hopefully I can just use the spoke wrench and get it uh, reasonably straight. Get some of these big wobbles out. This is actually going better and more easy than I thought it would. So at this point, I think we're not gonna try to replace the cables or anything. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. I am gonna go over the bike though and just kind of clean it with a rag a little bit. So I got this already used rag. You can use different things, but anything basically will work. I got this Windex actually, well, my mom passed away about four years ago and uh, she had some extra stuff and I, I had this Windex. So um, I'm just gonna spray the bike down with the Windex. I don't know, just to clean it a little bit. It makes me feel better, if nothing else, that it's slightly cleaner. <laughs> Let's go up here too. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna rub the whole thing down now that I gave it a Windex. There we go, that actually does look better. There was some, quite a bit of gunk up in that weld. Now, I don't know how that happened, but somehow the front badge got gnarred up. That looks better already. It's not gonna look nice, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of money, or I'm not gonna spend any money if possible on this thing. I'm definitely not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I don't have high hopes for this bike's future, sadly. Um, I'll be happy if somebody can use it and actually does use it, um, but oh, yeah, yeah, it's rough. It's a rough bike. It was never that good to begin with, and now it's even much worse. But maybe I can, maybe somebody can pick it up for very, very cheap transportation. If they need to get to work or something like that, it'll hopefully do the job. How many speeds do we have back here? Whoops, we don't, we don't need that cable either. Let's see the other part of the cable housing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, seven speed. Just like that Ozark Trail G1, same, same thing. Oh man, people were, ah, they're not happy with that video. That's my most disliked video on my whole channel, by the way. I've been doing videos for like, what, nine years now. <laughs> and that video, I knew it was gonna be a little bit of hate behind it, because I was like saying, it was negative, you know? It's like, what? Well, here, if you, if you guys don't know, the video is about the Ozark Trail G1 
gravel bike, which Walmart sells for $250, $248. And a lot of people like it because it's actually a decent bike. It's almost bike shop quality for Walmart department store prices. That's like they really actually, no joking, they actually did a good job for, for what you get. For what you pay, you get a lot of bike, you know? And I'm actually quite pleased with that. But I made a video because everybody else is already making videos about it. It was like everybody already made a video about how great it was. And, oh, I'm going to replace my $1,000 bike with this, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, we've seen enough praise. Let's talk a little bit about, let's like talk a bit about like why it's not that great. And so I made a video called Eight Reasons Why Not to Get the Ozark Ridge G1 Bike. And, uh, yeah, people didn't appreciate that mostly. <laughs> uh, some people understood and some people understood what I was saying. I'm just trying to give the counterpoint just to show, you know, just to talk about reasons you may not want to get it. And some of them are quite legit, but some of them are just kind of playful too. Like the color. I didn't, I said, I don't like the color, which I don't, but yeah, some people, um, yeah, it took it quite, seemed to take offense to that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't remember what I was saying about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> this has the same the same free hub body as uh, set up as that bike, which is a seven speed, which was one of my complaints. Cause uh, basically you're gonna have to replace your whole wheel if you wanna upgrade and then you're probably gonna have to upgrade your brifters too. But as everybody else said, it's just a beginner bike. It doesn't matter. And that's true. You know, if you just want something to get started for very cheap and you don't wanna mess with used bikes, then yeah, it's fine. But I think it doesn't make sense to put a lot of money into such a bike is all I was trying to say because, because uh, the upgrade path will end up costing more than a decent bike would it to begin with. And then you still have a cheap bike that nobody will want to, you know, it'd be hard to resell is all I'm trying to say. I better not get myself into more trouble with that, with the viewers. But really, I think most of the people who got a little bit upset about it were really just kind of fans of the bike to begin with. They either bought one or were thinking about buying one, so they just didn't really like the negative take on it or what they perceived as a negative take. That's all. Um, anyway, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, what was I saying? Okay, now I got the bike actually a lot cleaner looking. Hey, I got a tip from uh, the bike farmer. I didn't, again, this was from my mom's house. Pledge Orange Clean, and I wasn't sure if this is what he had been using, but the bike farmer is a, a better, frankly, a better YouTube channel than mine. <laughs> and he's an actual bike mechanic and owns an actual bike shop. And he uses something like this to shine up the, the finish. And I was like, wow, that's a cool hack. And uh, I happen to have this and I thought this wasn't what he had. I was like, oh, well, this isn't what he has. He has something more for wood, I think. But I just used it today actually on my, my Niner and I was like, wow, that looks really good. It actually looked quite glossy. So um, I'm not doing this to make this bike look so good, but I wanted to kind of show you guys, like, I, I think it's gonna look good, watch it not. But so this is the before, I'm gonna spray a little bit on. It doesn't even look like it's like sticking properly. And so when I first did it, I was like, oh, this isn't working. But. I swear it looked good on my other bike. I was like, oh wow, that actually looks nice. It, it gave it like a, a shine. And I think this one too, that actually looks shinier. That, that's cool. It has like a, and you can feel it with your fingers. It's like smooth. It's like a, like a thin coating that it leaves. It's cool. It smells good too. That's so cool. I mean, this bike's not gonna look good ever, of course, but it kind of almost like from 10, 20 feet away maybe. Almost looks like an okay bike. <sighs> All right, whatever. Ah, just, I was just gonna show you that. It feels very smooth now, almost like a wax. It's cool. Nice hack. Thank you to the bike farmer for that one. All right, so next thing we need to do, I guess, this is actually going way faster than I expected. Um, actually, a couple things I wanted to do. I have, I don't know if this will work, but I have some steel wool. I was thinking about trying to get some of that rust off of the handlebars, because that's an, those are aluminum bars. Oh, by the way, speaking of them, this is hard to tear off. Oh, there we go. Speaking of the uh, materials, I noticed this is aluminum, and by the way, the back triangle is steel. You can kind of tell by the welds, like the, the weld joints are much smaller and kind of uglier. Let me show you over here, I noticed this. It may be too dark for you to see, but these welds are super ugly. And uh, yeah, obviously this is a steel rear triangle and an aluminum front. So they got away with saying aluminum, 
but not all aluminum. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Honestly, it could be the whole thing could be steel. It wouldn't make any difference at all. It seems like a waste of even aluminum, right? So here we go. I did I did this a long time ago. Like when I was a kid, I think I would clean things up with steel wool. Uh, I don't know if this is working too good. This whole the whole bike is like wobbly because it's like hanging off on the stand. Okay, we're not gonna do this now. It's just not a comfortable position to work on that. Maybe later I'll do it. What does this warning say? Always wear a helmet to make sure stem and pedals are tight. Yeah, that's a good idea. Check your brakes. Do not ride at night. That one I always find curious. Do not ride at night. Why can't you ride your bike at night? Like, what's up with that? This is supposed to be a, a piece of transportation. Why wouldn't you be able to ride it at night? I've seen that before. This is a Kent bike, by the way, because I think anyway, because I when I did search next Av Avalon, uh, I saw Kent mentioned. So I think this is a Kent bike and I've seen on other Kent bikes about this uh, do not ride at night situation. Read the owner's manual. For a free owner's manual or questions, call blah, blah, blah. Made in China, of course, no problem. Okay, so, oh, here's a little more information um, about the bike. Yeah, all right, here we go. Kent International, right there, it's a Kent. Here's the model number. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's stop avoiding the real problem, the real elephant in the room, as they say, which is this wobbly wheel. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to try to lubricate these spoke nipples. Oh, look at that. The wheel has some, the tire has some damage. I will make sure to photograph that and show that in the uh, description of the ad when I go to sell it. And if it doesn't sell, by the way, I'll probably just donate it to somebody or give it to somebody for free. I don't know, but I will make sure to note that because it's kind of a safety thing. Not, I mean, normally just riding super slow as you will on this, it won't be an issue probably. But if you're ever coming down like a big steep bridge, and somehow got up to like 50 kilometers an hour, 35 miles an hour, that might make me a little bit nervous. So whoever buys this needs to know this tire is kind of trashed. I mean, it has a lot of grips, but it's trashed here. I can see some cracking on here too. So it's fine if you're going slow. If you're just going super slow, then who cares? It, it'll be fine. But um, if it blows out, it blows out. It doesn't matter, you're barely moving. But uh, if you're gonna actually go fast, like down a hill or a bridge, luckily you don't have many hills here in Florida, then um that would be dangerous anyhow so i'm gonna go ahead and lube these up so when i try to turn them they don't strip out and break and stuff like that now whenever you go to lube something the question is is always what lube to use you have so many choices so many lube choices i keep most of my liquids up here by the way kind of a mess i have those all these different liquids you, you can use like uh maybe this would even be good this is like a wd-40 walmart brand <laughs> walmart brand WD-40 on a Walmart bike. It's way cheaper than actual WD-40. Um, it does say lubricant, so don't get mad when I say lubricant. A lot of people say, oh, it's not a lubricant. It's a washer dryer 40 something, blah, blah, blah. But it does have lubricant in it and it does lubricate things. If you're not sure, just like spray it on your hands and go like this. You'll be like, okay, it's slippery. It's lubricating. Um, but I know it doesn't uh, long, it's like not for longer lasting lubrication. But in this case, we don't really need long lasting lubrication, but nevertheless, it's kind of messy. So I'm not gonna, I think I'm not gonna go with that. Uh, I also have this kind of WD-40. I recently decided to try it. It kind of works good, but it's not as good as like this type of stuff, I don't think, uh, but it's a lot cheaper. But another thing I can do is I have a video coming up, by the way, um, eventually, <laughs> and it's about using gear oil. <laughs> Uh, so I've been using gear oil for a lot of stuff on bikes lately, and I'm going to do a video about like how it's working and does it work. It's pretty, it's kind of thick, but I'm going to maybe give that a shot, put onto these. I'm not sure. It may be too thick. It may not get in there actually. Now that I think about, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Maybe I will go with the WD-40. See the choice of lubrication. It's always a, something you got to consider. So, um, but I don't want to make a huge mess either gonna go like this there we go I'm just gonna lubricate each one like that hope you can see what I'm doing I'm using the rag to kind of keep it off the floor keep it off the rest of the bike and also the other kind of bad thing about what I'm doing is uh, I'm getting it on the braking surface but uh we'll clean it off when we're done no problem the good thing about this kind of WD-40 in this container here is that it doesn't uh it's not like spraying everywhere it's not like hugely messy you have control 
over how much you get out of there. So that's kind of the good thing. So I'm just going around trying to lubricate these nipples so when I turn them, they don't get screwed up. It's just a precaution, that's all. Some of them are rusty, some of them are not. I actually have a truing stand set up over there, so if I really feel like it, I can, I can put the whole wheel in the truing stand. I think we're about back to where we started. Yes, okay. So that's that. Let me get some of this excess off. I'm kind of cleaning up the wheel and tire at the same time. Now, I'm not worried about the wheel being that true, but it needs to be true enough that you can actually use the brakes properly. So uh, I have this one park tool spoke wrench. I don't remember the size. Let's see if it happens to be the right size. It is not. The, no, it is the right size. Cool. All right, I have the right spoke wrench by luck. I mean, I think it's the most common one. So what we can do now is you can do a couple of this in a couple different ways. Um, basically, you just want to. Whoa, OK, so I'm just holding the brake pad, by the way, with my hand, just to kind of look at where it's high, where it's low. Um, you can kind of feel the spokes. That's another good way to do it. Go through and see if any spoke. None of them are broken. I can say that I kind of glanced at it. No broken spokes. That one's a little bit loose. Um, you can kind of feel the tension in the spokes, feel if anything's super loose. You can even listen to them. It's not a bad way. You can really accurately tell which, which spokes are looser or tighter just by listening to them. This side is a little looser, which I think is... Nah, maybe it's normal because it's not a symmetric wheel due to the drivetrain. Uh, so basically the, what I'm trying to say is the spokes aren't symmetrical on this hub, but like they're going to be flatter. They're going to be flatter on this side and more coming like that on this side. So, uh, I think typically that side, this side will actually be tighter. I might be thinking that wrong, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, none of them are like crazy loose. I don't think I do have a spoke tensioner tool. In fact, it's right here. I could go through if I wanted to and check the tension of all the spokes. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to go to that detail, but what I will do is go ahead and use a, I could use a zip tie or I could use the brake caliper itself. Let me try using the brake caliper itself. Don't want to waste any money. No, that's not why. I just think this might work. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just actually, I've hooked the brake back up and now I'm trying to, uh, by hand, just kind of set it to a place where, yeah, like that. So I can see can see when it gets super close like that. Like that got really close, now it's super far. And the anomaly seems to be the close, not the far. The far is kind of the normal. So it's telling me that like right here, for some reason, the wheel is like this way. Like it got hit or something or something kicked it or stepped on it at some point. And now this part of the wheel is way too much this way. Probably it's the opposite on the other side. What I could do too, is I could mark it with like a marker. Maybe I should do that. If it was a nice bike, I wouldn't use a marker, but it's not a nice bike. Where's my marker? So I'm going to go ahead and mark it with a marker um, where the problem is. So anyway, this opposite side probably has the opposite problem. So this side over here is super, I'm going to, okay. Okay, this side over here is super close. The zone is like right here to like right here, I'm just kind of guessing. It's like this is an area that's too much this way. So I'm guessing on the other side, it'll be the opposite probably. So yeah, it's really far right now over here. Yeah, and now it's coming close over here. Close, 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 far. Okay, we're probably here again. Let's go check. Yep, sure enough, we're in that zone. So it's a pretty simple situation, I guess. Uh, this zone here needs to go that way. So you either can pull the wheel that way by tightening these spokes, or you can loosen these spokes and allow the tension that's already here to pull. What you should do if you, if you know the tension is always uh, correct is you'll 
loosen these and then the same amount you'll tighten the other. So I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and just do to try to move it over. So again, here's our, our bad zone. Where's my marker marks right here. So right here, starting with this one, I'm going to loosen this spoke up. This is this the spoke goes to this side. Um, and, and I get sometimes mixed up on loosening and tightening, but basically if you face the spoke on, like on like this, if I'm facing the spoke, then it's, it's standard lefty loosey righty tighty. It's kind of confusing and there's a lot to it, but not a lot, but it's confusing. So anyway, I'm going to go uh, half of a, I'm going to do a whole half of a turn if I can. That's pretty tight. Ooh, ooh that's very not good feeling. Ugh, I did half a turn on this one. I'm going to go ahead and do half a turn on this one with the with the uh, reflector, which actually is in the way. So if we can get that down. I'm going to do half a turn. Should be. There we go. That's why it's good to lubricate them because uh, you don't want to screw that up. All right, and that's actually, so I did these two. So I'll go over here on the other side and I'm gonna tighten the opposite one. So I think I'm gonna do these two tighter. Okay, again, when I face it, it's gonna be a good old righty tighty. Okay, and then this one I was gonna do right, righty tighty also. About half a turn. Okay. Let's see if that did anything. So, uh, where, where are my marks? There they are. Okay. So before it was really close when it came in here. It definitely helped, I think. Yeah. I think it needs more. It's still kind of doing the same thing. So. Let's go again a little, this time we'll go to the next one to make it kind of even. I'm gonna do half a turn. Ooh, this one's not turning. Ugh, ugh, just, oh no, that's horrible. It's not turning, it, it, I think it, it's the right size, but it was so tight, I don't think it's turning. It's like, there's rust on this nipple, it's kind of seized up. We're gonna have to skip that one, unfortunately. I'll do this one quarter turn. Loosen this one out, quarter turn. I'm gonna tighten the other side, quarter turn. That keeps the overall tension in the system the same. It should just shift the wheel over. There we go. I think that's right. I hope that's right. Oh yeah, it's a lot better now. All right, check that out. So there's my zone. You can see my mark right here. That was where it was getting really close before. It is still kind of getting close, but not really. That's, I think we're at good enough time now. That's good enough, cool. It was actually quite easy. So um, anyway, the brake calipers are back on. Let's see if they stop reasonably correctly. Oh, what's going on? What's going on up here? I got nothing. It fell out, <laughs> something. What happened? What happened with my brake cable? <laughs> it's it's not in the thing. I think, oh, maybe it broke. That's not good. All right, let's undo this. See if we can figure out why our brake cable is not connected to our brake lever anymore. I may have to get a new cable if that, ha I mean, if that really broke. Maybe it didn't break. Maybe it just got pushed out at some point could be oh good it's not broken there it is everything's fine um why is it so tight all right whatever i'm gonna go ahead and undo this again get that out of there grab this put it in why is it so tight everything's so tight feels like it's tighter than it should be Hmm. Okay, let's try this. So basically what you do is you simply put this in there, something like, like that. Yeah, why is that so tight? Hang on, something's wrong. 
Something's wrong. What is going on? Maybe there's something. Let me go over here on this side. It actually doesn't look too bad and it's it's full cable, which is kind of easy to work with typically. Let me, let me lubricate some of this stuff. Sometimes things get a little bit bound up uh, in, in brake cables and it's good to try to lubricate things a bit, a bit to get things moving. Kind of messy there. All right, whatever. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. I mean, that shouldn't be like that for one. But the rest of that should be okay. You know what I mean, though? Like, that should have more cable. It's <laughs> There's not enough cable. Well, that's weird. I feel like uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. That does look like a 10 millimeter, so grab my 10. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that up, so. Here we go. Now I can get this front caliper back. There we go, now we got enough cable actually to work with. So I'll put this one behind here, stick this in like that uh there should be like a oh okay oh, never mind i think i need to actually stick it through here like this i guess it's slightly different than what i was expecting but not that much different so stick that in there like that there we go okay that should be good there we go and then this is your uh fine adjustment that you can do. Usually, I wonder what the best method is here. Usually I screw it all the way in and then I back it out like a turn. And of course this is a, this one here is the locking and then this is the adjustment. And that's how I usually do it. Okay, I wonder what the best method really is though. Now I will go ahead and set this side up. Now I wanna be careful here not to rip off that little guy. Um, so stick that back in there like that, pull this like that. Now we can set this thing upright. Okay. I'm just holding it with my finger right now. I can see this is where it used to be sitting, which is, mm, eh, it's not too far off. I'm going to let it out just a little more than that. Also, I'm going to squeeze this. Okay. Make sure everything is actually settled in. Okay, now we're going to take our 10 millimeter and tighten this down. We may have to undo it and adjust it more in a minute, but whoops. Let's just get started with something. All right. Okay, we need to. Oh, that's. Okay. We need to. We need, need to tighten that up a bit. Um, by the way, if anybody who doesn't know, I know there's all different types of people watch this, like some people who are new to bikes and some that are, are seasoned mechanics. But if you don't know, this is called a V-brake setup, which was probably the most manufactured brake setup ever. And they still make them today. Um, although disc brakes are becoming much more popular. But these are very cheap. They're quite light. Slightly finicky, not too bad though. Okay, that's getting more reasonable. We almost have a bike that'll ride now. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. So I'm gonna actually rotate this out to add a little more tension in it. And I'll lock it with the lock ring. Okay. Right again. Oh yeah, that's actually not bad now. See, we got the wheel somewhat true. Brakes are stopping somewhat okay. Tires holding air. Tiny bit of play in the hub, but not a lot. I'm gonna leave that alone. Chain is back on. Oh my gosh, we almost have a working bike. Now the front, uh, I didn't think 
it was actually that untrue. So we may just be able to, again, let's, let's lube things a little bit, uh, just to make sure things are moving. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> just trying to kind of add lube anywhere I can. <laughs> All right. So now let's go ahead and attach this brake cow upper back. This rubber thing is shot. I'm just going to get rid of it. Well, sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to get on there. Oh, I see why. Because I let that happen. That needs to go back in its barrel adjuster. That'll give us a little more, yep, it gives you a little bit more cable to work with. There, got it, all right. We're getting some rubbing. Let me try to tilt this whole thing up so we can get at it a little bit better. Love my Park Tools bike stand. Don't remember the model number now, it's been a while, but, whoa. I like it a lot. I had the same one in Switzerland, except for I had the quick, uh, quick uh, grip thing. This one's not, but it's no big deal. All right, so now we can see it a little bit better. And it's not really, I don't think our problem now is that the tire isn't true. Whoa, that stopped sharp. Actually, that's not too bad. <laughs> that's actually fine. This one's pulling harder. Excuse me, how's it working? Uh, this one. Yeah, this one's pulling harder. Like this one sh should be pulling a little bit more. You can adjust that right here. We'll adjust it a little bit. So we're gonna give this spring a little more tension and uh, see if we can get it moving. Now, see it's moving a little bit. I'll give it a little bit more tension. Don't wanna go overboard with it because sometimes, sometimes it's easy to go overboard with that adjustment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate that joint too. You know, maybe WD-40 in this application isn't the best, but I know nobody would think these are the best either. This is motor oil, but it works. I've used it. I've used it for this purpose. It has a nice little dropper. I can get in there, lubricate things, clean off a little bit of excess. Do the same over here. There, right in there, right in there. That should add a little bit of lubrication. <laughs> All right. Okay, this side's still pulling way stronger, so I'll try to add a little bit more tension on this one with this adjustment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still. Now if I run out of adjustment here, if I start getting to the end of its adjustment range, I can loosen this one out, which makes it a little bit weaker. They're getting better now, it's getting better, but this one's still not moving a lot. Okay, there we go. Now it's starting to move more, you can see, because this one's got, I've weakened this spring and I've strengthened this spring. It's rubbing a little bit. Now they're moving both pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Now would be the time maybe to adjust the wheel slightly. This, it's, see, it's, it's rubbing right there. So what I could do is maybe just tighten one of these spokes. That one, that one sounds good. This one's built, it feels a bit loose. Let's give this one just a tiny little bit tighter. Given that about a, a little bit less than a quarter of a turn. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. 
right here. This one I'm gonna loosen out. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna loosen that one out just a hair. Quarter turn looser. Oh, still rubbing a bit. You know, the easier way to fix this, this problem is actually it's, that's probably good enough. All right. I'm going to call that good for now. Yeah. All right. We're going to call that good for now. I don't like how this is kind of flopping around. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to use a zip tie. I got some zip ties here. I'm going to zip tie those together. Use one of these little mini zip ties just to kind of, I don't know, get these from flopping around all over the place. And let's trim the, trim the excess. Oh, I have a lot of my tools still in my, my mobile bag because I went to uh, Pennsylvania a, uh, last week. Yeah, last week, brought some of my tools. There. That's a little bit better, I guess. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, oh yeah, push this back up. Okay, push this one back up. We're still holding air, which is good. I think we almost have a rideable bike. No gears anymore. Make it simpler. Less problems. It does have a kickstand. Let's get this off of the, the work stand. Okay. It's pretty heavy, considering it's aluminum. I'm not going to worry about the rust. I changed my mind on that. It's a rusty bike, like, so what if I get the handlebars slightly less rusty? There's rust all over the place. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, yeah, it's heavy. How is aluminum so heavy? The handlebars are not perfectly straight. I think... I'm going to go ahead and sit on the bike. Ooh, wow. Okay, that's a comfy seat. Yeah, they're too much that way. Let's see... Let's see if I can just force them a little bit or what's the situation here. I don't want to mess the wheel up. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to have to make sure I'm right about this and back on the back on the bike. Yeah, they're just it's a little bit too much that way. So let's uh, see if we can make some small adjustment here. We got to take this little cap out of here. I'm going to leave that out. We need a larger Allen key. Maybe that is a six millimeter. Stick that in there. This is called a quill stem. It's an old standard still used on low end bikes. It's a fine standard. It's older. It's cheaper. It works fine. I think it's a bit heavier. Maybe that's why it fell out of favor. Oh, there we go. Whoa, okay. The cool thing is with the quill is you can let, let, uh, lower and raise your handlebars very easily. It's harder to do that with what they call the threadless headsets. So I'm going to try to get this aimed up as best I can. There's no science here as far as I know. You just have to really sit on the bike and, and try to get it right. I think we got it right. How's that look, guys? I think that's right. I think that's right. I'm going to just like, tighten it. Oh, hold on, maybe a little bit like that. It's so hard to say exactly. I think we got it. And I don't think we need to raise the bars any. I like them where they're at right here. Slammed. <laughs> so I'm going to tighten that up. It's kind of a wedge system. There's kind of like a, a, a wedge that, I don't know. Just s search uh, quill stem and you can see how it works. Okay, you want that pretty snug. All right. Oh, hey, look at that. The front shock is working. Uh, let me make sure this handlebar is tightened down. Yes, it is. Good. Uh, let's make sure the wheels are tightened down. A lot of these Walmart bikes uh, will actually have wheels that are not tight. I'm going to grab a 14 millimeter. Nope. Bigger. 15? 
There we go. And just, yeah, make sure that's nice and snug. We don't know, we don't, we don't want wheels falling off of bikes, that's for sure. Yep, that's tight. And that's tight, cool. And we are still holding air. It actually feels the same as when I pumped it. I think we actually have a bike <laughs> that's gonna work. Let's take it for a test drive. Oh, it's heavy. Are you curious how heavy it is? Yes? All right. I have this, um, this it's, you know, like how rubber sometimes gets like sticky and stuff. I've had this, I don't know. I bought this in Switzerland from AliExpress probably eight years ago. It works fine, but it's all sticky now. Super sticky. I can almost just hold it by, by the stickiness. So gross. Um, anyway, it's a luggage, uh, scale, but it can be used pretty well for bikes too. Now this is a heavy bike, so it's going to be a bit heavy for me to even do this. Okay, let's try. Okay, here we go. Are we up? Yes, we're up in the air. I know you can't read it, but it's 15.9 kilos. Yes, I use metric. Uh, you figure out how many pounds it is if you want. I, I don't know. 15.9 kilos. That's actually a little bit lighter than I thought. I was thinking it was going to be in the 17s or something like that. Uh, for reference, if you're not too much knowing about bikes, my my nice new Niner SIR9 is around 12.4 kilos. That one I think is around 11, if I remember right, 11 even, that gravel bike. So uh, 15, almost 16 is pretty heavy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just a junk bike. Let's go take it for a ride. The seat, the saddle is comfortable though, has springs and with the full suspension moving, it feels pretty good. Let's check it out. Oh my gosh, it's actually raining. Let's try the brakes. Hey, they work. Wow, that actually went way better than I thought. Than I thought it would. Um, one thing I want to change though, that I got from that trip, that I learned. I think the gear is a bit too high for most people, excuse me, most people who want to ride this type of bike. So I'm going to stick it back up here. Oh, it's so heavy. All right. I'm going to stick it back up here and uh, shift it into the next bigger one in the back. Oh, and you know what? I never even lubed this chain. <laughs> Let's lube the chain too. My glasses are all wet. Uh, yeah, so we just need our screwdriver. Here it is. Um... Was it this low one? I think it was the low one we were. Wait, what? no, this was the high, so okay. We want to tighten this in. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and shift to a, the next gear if we can. There it goes. There it goes. Easy. Then I'll make it a little bit easier for the next owner to pedal. Nice. Um, oh yeah, let's lube that chain. Like I was saying before, I've been using this gear oil. I'll tell you all about that in another video. It's controversial, but I guess I'm that guy now, that controversial YouTuber. Anyhow, uh, it's not actually dirty. Very, It's a pretty clean chain. Probably didn't get rode too much. And surprisingly, it's not rusty. You'd think sitting outside is, it would be more rusty. Let's go ahead and give the chain a, a little bath. Oops. Not a bath, but give it some lubrication. Not that it really seems to need it. I mean, the thing is running smooth. 
There we go. We've got all the links. Now I'm going to take this nice little rag and just run it through to get any excess off. It's always a good idea. There we go. All right, I think I think this bike is ready to go to its new home. It's, a, it's still a bad bike. It's not a good bike. Um, I'm not gonna pretend that I made a good bike here and that this is something I'd want somebody to have. But... <laughs> You know what, with that, we can... I, by the way, I took you off of my, my chest strap because I was gonna wrap this up. Ah, oh, my tools, they're not... They're not in the right place. Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for, AWS-1. I am going to steal these because I am 100% sure the next owner is not gonna be mounting accessories down here. So I take these, maybe I'll use them someday, put them in my little jar. And we took some weight off it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so this is it. This is the bike. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't have much more to say about this bike. I will put it on Facebook Marketplace. Actually, what I'll do is I will wait until tomorrow to see if the tires are still holding air because if they're not, then I may have to put new tubes in it or patch them or do something because obviously I don't want to sell a bike with flat tires. Uh, but then, assuming and hoping that I don't have to do anything and they actually hold air, I will do a bunch of pictures, um, including the dangerous-ish tire. Uh, maybe I'll make a little video that I can post on the Facebook ad and I will... Uh, try to sell this. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments because when I upload this video probably I won't have uh, Posted it yet. So let me know in the comments. What do you think I should post this for? I was thinking starting with like 50 bucks You know that <laughs> doesn't even shift uh, And then go down from there. Who knows? Maybe I'll only get $20 for it And if I can't get 20, it's really not even worth the time Then I'll just post it up for free and uh, somebody can pick it up Actually, I know somebody who might actually like the bike so all right, I think that's about it for this video. We are at one hour and four minutes. I doubt anybody's gonna be watching till the end here, but if you are, leave a comment down below because I wanna know who the heck would waste an hour and four minutes um, watching this. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. See you next time, bye.